Hi guys, welcome to the Limitless Legal Nurse Consulting Podcast. I have my beautiful guest, Brenda here. Thank you, Brenda, for joining me on this podcast. I can't wait to dive into this conversation. I can get to know you. I appreciate you being here. So thank yes. you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Great. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. So let's start off easy here. Let's start off with, you know, where, where are you at in the world right here? No, you don't have to give addresses. I say this all the time now. <laughs> you don't have to give addresses, locations, pinpoints, just where, where are you coming from here? I love it. Great first question. I always like to give a disclaimer. I'm originally from South Texas because, you know, you can take the girl out of Texas, but you can't take Texas out of the girl. So <laughs> born and raised in South Texas, Eagle Pass to be exact. And, but now I live in Oklahoma. I live on a right. ranch in Oklahoma with my husband of 18 years. Uh -huh. It's a very isolated cattle ranch with horses and cattle and all the things. So that's where I'm based out of now. Okay. Let's ask, I want to ask you a little bit more about that. Sure. When, okay. So how long have you been living on the ranch? How long have you been there? 10 years this month, actually. Okay. And then what made you decide to move and live on a ranch? Yeah. Well, my husband, actually, uh, he was raised out here and okay. he is a working cowboy. That is his oh. occupation. And he, that's what he does for a paycheck for a living. Mm -hmm. So 10 years ago, we actually lived in civilization <laughs> and I, had, <laughs> I was loving my job. And, uh, anyway, he, it was just an opportunity that came up and he got a call and said, Hey, wow. we have this opening on this ranch. We thought of you, would you like to come and interview for it? And it has literally been his dream job. In fact, wow. when we were dating, wow. uh, I came out here to visit because he would still come out here every now and then. And we passed by this very location mm -hmm. where we live now. Mm -hmm. And he told me, you see there, if, if I ever get the chance to work on that ranch, I would really like to. And this was years before we ever got married and things right. got really serious. And then it, it happened and it that all happened. happened. Wow. That's so exciting. And for us city girls, I think of, um, Yellowstone. <laughs> like, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a working cowboy. Oh, I know what those are. Cause I'm in California. I'm a California girl and I know uh -huh. nothing about ranches. And that is probably why I asked you because I find, you know, a lifestyle like that. So fascinating because it's so far from where I live or where I come from, but I think it's amazing. And it, there are thoughts, you know, gosh, I wonder what if, and actually my daughter, my 17 year old daughter, that is exactly what she wants to do. She wants to live on a ranch. She Aww. wants to build her business and live on a ranch. Oh, so, that's great. That's, <laughs> yeah, it's I know. Right. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so great. That's yeah. so great. So, um, all right. So tell me a little bit about your nursing story. So, you know, how long have you been a nurse? Where did you kind of start? How did that start? Let's start there. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you for asking that. I originally did not, um, uh, go into nursing straight out of high school. I'll be very honest. I never wanted to be a nurse. Like, it's not something that I grew up always, you know, aspiring to be. I come from a family of school teachers. Uh, both my parents were school teachers, all of my aunts, uncles, cousins. So that's the path that I started on originally. But once I got married and moved to Oklahoma, uh, I wasn't quite finished with my teaching degree. So there was kind of a little lull there with my um, college education. And then when the time was right to go back to school, I decided on nursing because it was still a field where I could help people. I liked the sound of the schedule <laughs> and mm -hmm. the high demand for nurses and also the pay, especially mm -hmm. in the state of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Nurses, you know, teachers don't get paid very well, unfortunately, in this state. Mm -hmm. And uh, nursing just sounded to me like the next best next best thing next to teaching. So I right. went to LPN school in 2011 mm -hmm. and then I graduated from that in 2012. So late 2012, early 2013, I was an LPN and my very first nursing job was in corrections at oh, a wow. okay. correctional facility. So not exactly what I had pictured or my yeah. dream job. And that just 
just to put it all in a nutshell, my whole nursing career hasn't been like, yeah, yeah. what I imagined right. in my right, head. I'll right. be honest. Like in the movies. It wasn't uh, like right, in the like movies. In, yeah. Yes. Or what they even like told me in nursing school. Right. But besides that, it has been good. Um, so I was an LPN for three years and I did corrections and also skilled nursing mm -hmm. at a post-acute rehab facility, as well as home health, just on the side, PRN. Uh-huh. Went to RN school in 2015, Okay. finished that in 2016 or so. And as an RN, I continued with rehab. Mm -hmm. And this time I went to inpatient acute rehab, mm -hmm. did that along with med surge. And then I was able to transfer to the uh, pre-op pack you or recovery with outpatient surgery and endoscopy yep. and then uh, wound care. So I did okay. all of that before mm -hmm. becoming a legal nurse consultant. Right. So you've got, uh, you've got your hand in kind of, you know, all different sorts of specialties, which mm -hmm. makes you a great legal nurse, right? You've got a got a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of this and a bit of that. I feel, I love that. I love that. So I, I want to go back to the corrections. So mm -hmm. was that when you finished LPN school, was that something that you sparked your interest or was it just like, oh, there's an opening. I'm going to take it because I now I'm working. Tell me a little bit more about that. I because I, I, I find that fascinating too, because you know, not, you don't find that many nurses that are that have gone into that special yes absolutely I didn't even know it was an option and to answer your question it was a little bit of both actually mm -hmm. I had a, a friend who was already working there as an LPN and the community or the town we were living at at the time uh, it was one hospital there and they didn't hire very many LPNs mm -hmm. and they actually did hire LPNs in the ER which I thought was interesting mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. kind of like a tech position. Mm -hmm. And I loved ER as a student. Right. That was always my goal. That's the mm -hmm. only place I ever wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, fresh out of school, yeah. you interview, yeah. I didn't get the job. So yeah. I knew that I did not want to do long-term care or nursing home mm -hmm. and there were assisted living. I didn't want to do mm -hmm. health. So mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. said, Hey, we have an opening. Right. And I decided to go ahead and go for it which was so out of my league. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's brave too. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. And till this day, it ha it still remains one of my favorites. Oh, uh, wow. That's really good to hear. Yeah. One of your, yeah, yeah that's so great. Yeah, I loved it. That's great to hear because it is it is like a mystery. It's the mm -hmm. great thing about nursing and my other daughter is getting ready to go to nursing school. Mm -hmm. um, the great thing about nursing is that, and I, I've told people this for 20 years, it's there are so many different avenues you can go into and you just proved mm -hmm. it like, Oh, we can go into corrections. We can go into, and that is, that is such a mystery because you don't meet many nurses in that specialty, or I would say kind of in the same lines would be um, like school nursing. You don't really meet that right. many nurses that go into school nursing, but it exists. Yes. You know? yeah. So it thank you for sharing fair. that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, all right. So once you uh, went out of corrections and you started working in uh, the other field, what made you decide to go into legal nursing? Well, how did that transition come about? Again, great question. I love all these questions so far uh, because I love sharing. So, <laughs> hey, I hope they're easy. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, great. You know, to be perfectly honest, um, COVID had a lot to do with it. Okay. Um, I quickly realized as an RN, um, the, the demand of the profession, uh, just the demand. And I felt like I was always, I, I felt like I was always killing myself. Like I, I mm. wasn't, I, I felt like I wasn't my best self as right. a person. And I felt yeah. very bad about that, uh, in trying to take care of others. Right. So, but I think it was just the demand and I'll be perfectly honest by that time we had already moved to the ranch. So mm. to put in perspective, I have a one hour and 15 drive from my home to the yeah. hospital where I, I work. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And working the 12 hour shifts, rotating yep. weekends. And of course I started off on night. So all of that. So right. then by the time 
from 2016 to 2020 yeah and 2021 we're still in covid so i was thinking uh, maybe i should look for something else that's a little bit um less maybe taxing, less demanding yeah. yeah 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 so that you know that's what got the ball rolling in researching other areas that i could mm. do it. and working from home just sounded so lovely because i could spare myself well, yeah yeah and then especially during covid i mean that you're talking about you know <laughs> killing yourself as a nurse before COVID and then add COVID to that. And it was like, what, you know, what did we sign up for? This is, you know, yeah. how am I going to keep going with this? So I, and then of course your commute an hour, hour plus each way, mm -hmm. it, it's really, yeah. You really have to think about your quality of life, especially during COVID when people were questioning quality of life anyways. So there you go. that totally makes sense of why you would choose to go down that road. Mm -hmm. Had it been something that you had heard of before, or was it during that time where you were like, okay, I'm just going to look at, you know, op my options and you had never heard of it. So did you know about legal nursing or did you um, just kind of hear about it then? I had never heard of legal nursing ever before. So as I'm sitting around the house thinking, you know, what mm -hmm. do I do? Do I switch yeah. specialties again? Right. Do, do I quit nursing altogether? I mean, that mm -hmm. was a thought. Yep. Um, and I, you know, just getting like on the, the sites we all know, like Indeed and so forth, mm -hmm. Google searches, I was looking into like uh, quality assurance, utilization, mm -hmm. you know, those yep. types of right. things. I had seen some like clinical documentation mm -hmm. uh, job openings at various mm -hmm. hospitals and stuff like that. But as far as legal nursing, I had never heard of it before okay. yeah. at that point. But I was on social media one right. night and it popped up. Actually, I must have tapped some things, right. responded on something. Right, and right, right. I saw an ad for a program and that is what sparked my interest. So right. I looked into it and read a little bit about it, watched some YouTube videos about legal nursing. And it yeah. just seemed to just hit all of, yeah. all of the yeah. high yeah. points for me as right. the way brain works, my personality, everything. Right, right. And I went ahead and signed up for a program and learned how to be a legal nurse. And yeah. 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 So it's like the 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 check boxes. I remember doing that as well, where you're just like, okay, that makes sense. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah. So then, so then you decide to become a legal nurse. You're like, all right, I'm going to make this change. This is going to this is going to fit my lifestyle, my home, my, my quality of life. What was one of your biggest fears when it came to, um, doing this? Like, okay, now I've made this decision. What I, I like to talk about fears because, um, we're human and we all have them mm -hmm. and, uh, and we don't necessarily talk about them. So, so what was one of your biggest fears when it came to, you know, getting involved in a new, profession like this. I appreciate you asking about this because there's there were so many fears. I think, and I'll be honest, I think the fear part came once I started doing it full time. Because when I was doing the the program and taking the classes, I was still working full time. So at that point, it was more of a, it was more exciting. I was super not that I it's not exciting or I'm not motivated right, now. Right, right. A different type at that point in time. Right. But the fear aspect came definitely when I decided just to take the dive and quit yeah. my my yeah. full-time job yeah. to go all in as we were talking about earlier and and go all in full-time with this. So then it's like okay, right. I just did this. So now right. like, all on me, I'm yeah. responsible for, you know, bringing home the paycheck for yeah. um, generating mm -hmm. my clientele. Mm -hmm. And you really put yourself out there and mm -hmm. that's scary. Mm -hmm. so that was a, a fear. Uh, I have just a fear of failure. So, right, right, right. As, as we, I think we all do. Mm -hmm. Um, it was, so it was like the pressure, right. You put you, the pressure of this being the sole income mm -hmm. of, of, you know, not, not having a per diem or not having a, 
you know, mm-hmm. a couple of days here or there. So probably, so the pressure and then, mm-hmm. yeah, the fear of failure. I think that that seems to be the, um, the most common answer to that question mm-hmm. actually is the fear of failure, which mm-hmm. just shows how, um, exceptional you are, you know, because I think if we, if we didn't fear the failure, then we wouldn't be the type of person that, you know, drives for success, right? Because if we didn't drive for success, we wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter if we failed or not. But since Mm -hmm. you drive for success, like the last thing you want to do is fail. So I think that that's such a fair statement on, um, on, on fear of failure. So how did you get past the fear of failure? If you, if you can say, I, I put that into words, you know? Yeah, no, uh, perfect. Uh, you know, I'm still a work in progress, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the fear kind of travels in different areas. It's kind of what I've noticed uh, a year and a half in yeah. this business is, yeah. uh, you know, I may have had a fear early on about having a phone call with an attorney mm-hmm. client, and now that's mm-hmm. easier. And right. then now maybe the fear is uh, retaining attorney clients, right? To get that consistent work. So I think the fear so far for me hasn't gone away completely, but a good way that I have been able to just manage it is just acknowledge it Mm -hmm. and just ask myself, okay, why am I feeling fear over this? Or why am I anxious Mm -hmm. over this? Or what's Mm -hmm. upsetting me about this? And then just acknowledge Mm -hmm. what it is and then still take that action and still move Mm -hmm. forward and do the work. So That's how I've learned to deal with the fear. Getting past it, yeah. Yes, throughout this. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever go back and look at, I mean, I, do you ever pat yourself on the back and go, okay, like you just said, I used to fear making a phone call. And then you, some, I don't know. For me, I like to go back and reflect. And I don't, I think that might be a, a lot of personal development that I've done over the last, I don't know, 15 years. Um, I go back and I and I try and give myself a pat on the back and say, okay, well, I used to fear this and now I don't. So, okay, we're going to, do you ever do that? Do you ever reflect back on like where you came from, where you started and that where you're at now? I do. Yes. I'm a big reflector as well. And I'm a big self evaluate, almost, almost like to the extreme. (laughs) Absolutely. But I think it's good. And, um, you know, at when I finish my day, I I do pat myself on the back and I say, you know, good. you're doing this, you know, yeah. this is not yeah. easy and yeah. you're doing it. You did yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's great. I love that. Okay. So what, um, what's one thing that kind of surprised you about the business? It could be, it could be good. It could be bad. It could be, you know, what was like, oh, wait, I didn't know. I didn't know about this. Good, mm-hmm. bad, anything. What was one thing that surprised you? Yeah, I think I probably have top two. Um, the number one thing that surprised me about this business is how many legal nurse consultants there actually are. Like mm-hmm. I didn't, especially, and I didn't know this and I didn't realize this until I got on LinkedIn. Right. I set up a profile, started making connections and just the feed and what's out there. I'm like, oh, that has really taken me by surprise. Yeah. And also to learn how many other nurses um, have been doing uh, legal nurse consulting since the 80s. Right. And so that was surprising to me. Mm-hmm. And then um, the second thing that I found surprising is the marketing aspect of it. Okay. And the challenge that it is to gain attorney clients. Uh, mm-hmm. That has been, because I will be perfectly honest, it has mm-hmm. It has not come, that is not easy because we are, you know, and sales kind of has a bad connotation sometimes, right? Nobody wants to be salesy and so like that. It is a form of sales. We are selling um, a very, very good service as nursing experts and with our knowledge and background Mm -hmm. to assist attorney clients with their clients and their cases. So we do have to educate attorneys and and market and let them. Right. So the education part, we know we do well because we're nurses and that's part of our job. The marketing part, I totally understand. Um, 
do you think that if you, because we're talking about how it surprised you, obviously um, the, the legal nurses, the number of legal nurses uh, out there and those that have been doing it for a long time um, was one of the things that surprised me as well for the same reason. Once I jumped on LinkedIn, I was like, whoa, wait, there are so many of them. Yeah. So I, I, I'm with you on the surprise uh, for that. But as far as the marketing goes, do you think that if you knew that before you started, would that have halted you from starting or would that have helped or it is what it is? What do you think about that? Because it is because as, as nurses, we do not have to sell ourselves. I mean, we have to sell ourselves when we, when we apply for a job, but yeah. We don't have to sell ourselves as far as a business goes. Uh, and that's so foreign to nurses. And I will say that one of the boxes for me was that I already had that experience and that was like a comfort zone for me, but it wasn't a comfort zone for me 15 years ago because I was just, an, I was, I don't want to say just a nurse because I hate that term, but mm -hmm. I was a nurse learning to market myself and it was so terrifying and I was much younger than too. Mm -hmm. um, so do you think that if you knew about how challenging the marketing part would be, would that have changed your decision or, um, or not? Great question. Um, I, I think I'll put it this way. If I had known like more fully or more detailed the the challenging aspects of the marketing or even having to do as mm. much marketing mm. And, mm. and whatnot i think it would have made me a little bit more cautious in okay. in entering and and kind of tapping into the field but ultimately i don't think it would have changed my mind to want to try it and want to yeah. do it because yeah. i i am a risk taker yeah uh, I, I love taking risks and, oh. and then once I take that risk, I'm like, oh gosh, like, what did I just do? So now I love that. I'm yeah. I love I want, that. And now I, I want to follow through. I have right. to follow through. Right. Right. So right. I think I would answer the question in that way. I would have yeah. been, I probably would have thought it out mm -hmm. more thoroughly. Right. But I think I still would have made the same decision. And actually it's probably a good thing that. Yeah. I didn't because it's yeah. kind of like, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And it was like, it is what it is at this right. point. So right. You're already in it. You're already in it. Might as well learn how to do it. Yeah. 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 No, I yeah. asked that question too, because I still, I still work in the hospital and I, uh, you know, I mean, I've been, I've been a nurse for a very long time. And when you talk to nurses about this, um, their biggest fear, a lot of their biggest fear is that part of it is like putting themselves out there and they would never yeah. do this. They think yeah. it's interesting, but they would never do this if they had to put themselves out there. So I always, I, I like that to ask that question because now you're, you know, past that, like, would that have changed your mind earlier? But your risk taker. And I think that maybe that's probably what uh, a lot of us have in common is that we are risk takers is that the fear of the unknown doesn't stop us and that you were willing to like deal with whatever shows up. And so what showed up was like, okay, now I've got to market myself. Mm -hmm. All right, let's learn this. Let's take this on. Mm -hmm. So I love that we dive down that yeah. little path. Yeah. Cause that's, yeah, that's actually a great one question. of my, that's one of my favorite topics in the world yeah, because I love it. I was terrified of marketing myself years ago. Yeah. Terrified. I was an introvert. Yeah. Um, I remember my mom even saying years into me marketing myself, looking, she looked at me and she's like, who are you? Are you, are you the same person I know? Because I had to just gulp and jump, you know, jump and hope that that parachute opens up. And mm -hmm. so now I love talking about it. I love sharing about it. I love um, imp helping others empowering them to be like, just do it. You know, mm -hmm. you, the parachute will, will, will show up, you know, you won't fail. You won't fail. I promise. Yeah. Um, but it is scary for us nurses because we, that's not what we signed up for in, in first, as far as nursing goes. But yeah. I also, now I just thought of that. I think we actually do. I think I know for me, when I was a brand new nurse and I, I was just, when I was going through nursing school and I remember showing up in a patient's room and being an introvert back there when I was in my twenties 
I was such an introvert and walking into a patient's room, I was terrified to have to actually talk to somebody. So in essence, I had to gulp, be brave and have a conversation. So it's really kind of the same thing. Now, I just literally just thought of that as we were talking. So I think us nurses are salespeople and we don't know it. So. And we don't know I, it. That's a good way to look right? at it. I mean, yeah. I, I mean that hopefully that, that sticks with someone because, um, you know, but thank you for, thank you for diving down that, that road with me. Yeah. That's a great question. And honestly, I love, I love having that conversation. Yeah, And honestly, that's a question that I really haven't, um, thought too much about, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I've just like, we're talking about, you know, you dive in and you're trying to keep up yeah. and swim and stay afloat yeah. and, yeah. But that's a very good reflection question. And Kate, and also one, you know, as new LNCs are wanting to come into the field, then you and I can educate them, you know, yeah. on the aspect of the business. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. but, but there is also, you know, like you said, it's like, I almost didn't, you almost didn't, didn't want to know, like mm-hmm. now looking back, like I can see that too, not yeah. wanting to know and then being okay with like, all right, I'm here you know, yeah. now I got to figure it out. So, uh, it, there's really no right or wrong answer to that. You know, it is what it is. Okay. So now I want to talk about, since we talked about fears, we talked about what surprised us, what, I, and we, t- we touched a little bit on patting ourselves on the back. I want you to pat yourself on the back. I want you to share how you feel that you, um, how you feel you shine. Like what is, what is one thing or more, um, about what you do now where you're like, I got this. Like I, 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 this is my strength. This is where I feel like I shine. Toot your own horn. (laughs) Okay. I'll do my best at that. Cause, uh, I'm not very good at that to be honest, um, because I am very, very hard on myself. So, uh, I think to answer your question, um, I, so and it's not bragging at all. Yeah, it is, it is yeah. something that I think that we, and, 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 and just to give you a little bit of extra time to think about it, but I think that, um, I put, I asked this question for a reason because we don't toot our own harm because mm-hmm. we are hard on ourselves because we never give ourselves as much credit as we should, because we don't feel like we, not that we don't deserve it, but it's not necessary. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just my own personal observation over time, Mm -hmm. but I also think that, and it might be part of the sales thing that, that, you know, you've got to look at where you shine and sometimes it can be written. It's easier to write than to speak it, Mm -hmm. but you also don't feel like you, you know, need to want to be braggadocious or whatever, Mm -hmm. but I, it, there's no reason why we can't. I think that, that Mm -hmm. really, saying what, what, where we shine is something that, uh, I think it empowers us, you know, to, to, to Absolutely. really like, Hey, hear it come out of our own mouth. You know, yeah. that's why I asked that question. Oh, great. No, I agree. And just to touch before I answer the question, touch on how, um, we don't uh, give ourselves enough credit. I think that comes from just being a nurse, you know, at the bedside, we do what we do out of compassion right Right. and caring and wanting to comfort others like that's our driving force as nurses so we just do what we do and there is a lot of in at the bedside or in any different specialty of nursing uh we don't get a lot of thank yous uh, a lot of times and when we do they're few and far in between. And when, and when we are celebrated, it feels amazing, Mm -hmm. but for the most part, we're there grinding day after day, just doing what we do. And just real quick, a nurse mentor of mine, when I was at the hospital during COVID, um, you know, this was in the early days of COVID and we were being called heroes and the front lines and Mm -hmm. yada, yada. And we were talking and I mentioned something about being called heroes. I don't even remember what my comment was, but what stuck out to me is my nurse mentor. She said, like, there's no need to be being called heroes. We're just doing what we do right. every day. And I'm, and that has stuck with me right. for various reasons, but I, I, it's just an example of what you're saying. And 
But it is still important to recognize and acknowledge this is my skill set or this is not my skill set and I'm strong here. I'm not as strong here. So I'll work on this. But I went off on a tangent there. But no, I no, no. I think that that's really good. I think that's really good. In fact, I still get, I still, um, I still say that, oh, it's just my job. Thank you. But it's just my job. And I have to catch myself because it's almost like I, I remember this, uh, this scenario. And I, I, um, I've taught this to my kids because someone shared this with me was when someone gives you a compliment, our natural reaction is to say, Oh, Oh, oh no, that, you know, thanks, yeah. but no thanks, you know, like whatever. And by doing that, you're telling them that they're not important, that what they said was not important. When they went out of their way to say something nice to you, you just shunned it. And we don't see it that way as we're receiving it. We see it as like, hey, no, I'm just doing my job. Hey, you know, whatever. But the the best thing you can do is to receive that because yeah. it acknowledges the person that says that. And so I learned that many years ago and I, I try to teach that to my kids, but it is a natural reaction to be just like, Hey, no, I'm good. It's just my job. Like I just, this is what I signed. Up. And I kept, I catch myself all the time saying that oh, this yeah. is what I signed up for. Thanks. But this is what yeah. I signed up for, you know, no big deal. Right. Um, so if we have to force ourselves to toot our own horn, then so be it. So there you yeah. go. I love it. I <laughs> amen to that. So I feel uh, where I shine as a legal nurse is uh, one of the things is being a good listener when my attorneys um, let me know what they need or what they want in a work product. So I listen, I'm a big note taker. And then that in turn uh, results in a high quality work product for the attorney that's exactly what he is needing to help him either make the decision on whether or not to pursue a case mm -hmm. or to build his case, you know, mm -hmm. if it's going to go all the way. Yeah. And another place where I feel I shine is really following through with with the attorney throughout the process so mm -hmm. i am not one to do a case and okay you know they pay me for the case and then go on i i am fully interested i'm genuinely interested in that client that the attorney mm -hmm. is representing mm -hmm. so I follow up and I'll ask, hey, how did that work out? Uh, were you able to settle if you don't mind me asking? And that really shows attorneys that as a legal nurse, I care uh, and that I'm just not out to just get their business. Right. I love that so much. You have no idea how much I love you shared that because yeah. I will tell you that um, the majority of uh, the attorney clients I've worked with in the re in, in the most recent time, um, they're not big at communicating back, like giving mm -hmm. feedback or things like that. And I, I, I do take interest because, you know, you're looking at their, these, these, these clients, medical records, and you're, you really kind of take it on, mm -hmm. but they don't follow up. They, I, someone told me that sometimes you have to think of it as you're just a service provider, right? You're, you're just a service provider. So don't take any, um, any offense to them not following up, mm -hmm. but there is this like piece of you that goes, what, what happened to that? So I love the fact that you share that that's one of your strength is following up and, and really being interested. And I think that that probably really helps with your relationships with your attorney clients, because then they don't look at you as just a service provider. They mm -hmm. look at you as something more than that. So that is, I'm so glad you shared that. That's so, hey. that's, that's such a great quality to have, you know, yeah. you, we, I think we all are great listeners. I think that, um, uh, uh, I would hope that that would be, you know, obviously one of your best skills. Um, but that the fact that you continue along the path of the patient or their client mm -hmm. 
I, I think it shows like what what a good nurse you are, right? Like we've all of a sudden kind of taken our nurse hat off, but you haven't. You've continued on with that. So yeah. I, I love that. That's yeah, such a great, great, such a great value to your <laughs> attorney clients. It really is. Like it sticks. That's that's so great. Thank you for sharing right. that. Of course. Yeah. They definitely take note of that. And I think it's important yeah. to showcase that. Yeah. Okay. So how did you, how did you launch your business? Um, I know you said you made the decision. You were working, you were working first, right. While you were going through the program, mm -hmm. when did you decide that you were going to go full time in this? So how did that launch look like to you? Okay. So I decided to go full time with the business in late summer 2022. Okay. Yes, 2022. So I started marketing. Um I just got, you know, I went on GoDaddy and I got I bought a domain and a business yeah. email and I did a quick website just so I could have something cuz I figured in my mind if I'm going to start emailing as my, my first marketing strategy to yeah. attorneys, I want them to have somewhere to go to, to view, you know, what I'm about. So right. I, I did that first, um, in July of 2022. And I just started doing email marketing. And in September of 22, I count as my official launch because that's mm -hmm. when I, you know, got my LLC and I got registered with my state and I got LinkedIn and it just kind of came together a little bit more yeah. uh, official business owner. Yes. Yeah. 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 Stamp yeah. Of, yeah. It was official. Yeah. Was yeah, yeah. Stamp uh, of approval. Yeah. Yes. I'm recognized. <laughs> right. And so that was just, you know, kind of my launch and, um, um, so yeah, and then just, you said you, yeah, then you were, then you said, I'm in it. I'm, 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 I'm doing this thing. That's yes. awesome. So, go. so email marketing and then, and then you, you felt like you, you, this was the thing for you and then launched mm -hmm. it, build your business. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to kind of digress a little bit, a little bit sure. from the whole business launch. And we're going to talk about people and relationships. Uh -huh. And would you say that you have a, you know, a big cheerleader in your corner, many cheerleaders in your corner, who's kind of rooting you on in this business side of things, you know, who are yeah. your biggest cheerleaders? Uh, well, first and foremost, number one, my husband, yeah. I mean, he, and we don't have kids. It's just us two with yeah. our animals. <laughs> and, <laughs> Those are your kids. Those are your yeah, kids. <laughs> there are babies. Uh, right. They stay babies forever. But uh, right. my husband, he is, he's amazing. He's, I'm gonna get emotional. I mean, he, but that poor guy, he mm. listens to me, you know, just kind of vent or talk or discuss the same thing over and over and over again. Right. Uh, but he, he helps me that. like with my cost estimates, mm -hmm. uh, cause he's great with numbers. I'm not. Mm -hmm. And of, actually he's part owner of, of my That's business. Awesome. Yeah. He's your partner. Oh, he's my partner. Yay. He's my business yeah. partner. Yeah. And he yeah. jokes and he's like, I'm the CFO. I'm like, yes, right. CFO. It's perfect. It, you have a title. He, <laughs> yes, he has an official title, but yeah, yeah. you know, he supports me. Mm -hmm. Uh he actually was a big supporter in me just um learning how to be a legal nurse and taking that okay. program. And he's like, this yes. is so you, like, if uh -huh. you want to get away from the bedside, this might be uh -huh. a great transition. So, so he was engaged in your, he was engaged in your journey from the beginning. Right. Yeah. Oh, Very. I love that. That's, Very. It makes a big difference. It makes a big difference to have that just kind of yeah. lifts you, lift you up, keep you going, yeah. lift you up, keep you going. Yeah. So and I love that. Not time. everybody had, not everybody has a support system. And so that's another reason why I asked that question, because I know over, over the years, I've had support systems that, that you would think were my support systems. And then I had, and then I didn't. Mm -hmm. And so I had to rely on other people to be my support system. So, yeah. um, but I love the fact that, you know, he, he is, he is, he's right there. He's right yeah. there. And he's right, been right there for, since the beginning, yeah. um, Thank you for sharing that. I love of course. That. Yeah. He is my number one supporter, cheerleader. And then on the side, I have an online uh, group 
with a lot of other LNCs where we uh, ask questions and collaborate. And, yeah. and that's important too, to have yeah. within the family, your support system, but also in the business, because mm -hmm. your family, they support you in, in a different way than your colleagues do. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I have a little chat group with some other LNCs and that we talk every day. Right. Uh, it's kind of an accountability group. Yeah. They keep each Mastermind other. Mastermind group. Yes. Your yes. own little mastermind group. I love yes. it. That's great. And that. it, it, it's really helpful. So yeah, no, I'm glad that you have, you have, you're supported all around. That's fantastic. Okay. So we are always a student of our craft, right? We always are learning. What is the one thing you do in your business now or your report writing or your, uh, you know, or your technology, anything to do with your business. What is the one thing you do now that you didn't do a year ago? Maybe. Have you changed the way you do things? Have you modified things? Um, is it totally different than it used to be mm -hmm. or not? Okay. Uh, the number one difference that I'm doing now that I wasn't doing a year ago is hyperlinking the medical records mm -hmm. to my reports. Um, mm -hmm. I really wanted to do that right out the gate, right. but at the time it was just too much. You know, it, it, everything is so new in this yeah. business. The only thing that is not new is reading the medical records, <laughs> but, right. but everything else has been brand new and a learning process. So mm -hmm. I put that on hold. Um, just so I can get the practice in writing the reports and getting in that, right. that groove. But now I'm at the point where I'm hyperlinking uh, medical right. records to my reports. And yeah. as far as changing any of my report templates, I'm just now starting to think about revising my template for merit reviews mm -hmm. and for case mm -hmm. readings. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I think right now, what I'm focusing on is my, um, my time process. Right. Right. And that's very yeah. important in this line yeah. of work. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just now brainstorming in yeah. my head ideas on how I can further fine tune. Yeah. Yeah. That efficiency, system. efficiency. Yeah. Like, yeah, I totally get that. So I love that. Um, clearly you are a, a student of your craft can continue to be a student of your craft and haven't just said, okay, this is how I do it. This is the only way I do it. So you're continuing to, um, make it better. Right. Mm -hmm. Which, which is so great. So thank you for sharing that. And that's a fair, that's a fair, uh, a fair thing for you to do. Like you've get, you gave yourself grace in the beginning, you're like, I really, really would love to hyperlink these, but I know where my limits are and that's only going to hold me back. And it's something that can, I can do later on once I get the flow of this. So, yeah. uh, so you gave yourself grace, which is great. And you didn't beat yourself up over not having it. So, and, mm -hmm. and that just shows your confidence too, which is fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. Um, what, uh, I'll only like two more questions. Sure. We've made it this far. Join it. Yeah, keep them Yay. Coming. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. So what is one of your biggest tips you have for L LNCs for report writing? Like what tip would you give someone that maybe um, is new or maybe is not new, but is kind of something that you've, you found helpful to you? For report writing? I would say uh, learning, really learning how to produce a high quality report. Mm -hmm. uh, and by with that, what I mean is everything from your font, the formatting, the structure of your template, uh, grammar, punctuation. So it's actually kind of going back to like English, English class or like, right. Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, I feel like would be a, a good tip starting off is focusing on that. And then navigating, learning how to really navigate the medical records and then translate that onto right. a report because we don't as legal nurse consultants, um, or at least we shouldn't just be copying and pasting 
from the medical records. So that would be a tip is get a good understanding of just the foundation, the structure of report writing, because once you do that, then once you're reading the records and trying to transcribe the relevant facts mm -hmm. onto the report, then you'll know, you know, right. where to put all that in. Right. So, so, um, kind of adding to that. So how would you best, uh, how, what would your best tip be to, you know, improve on the foundation, foundational writing, a best quality report. So you say, okay, I would like to make my reports better. I would like to make them a, a higher quality. What would be your first step in doing that? How would, how would someone make their report better? Would they, you know, is there a program? Is there a, 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 you know, someone that, that writes really well, or how would you say is best to, to go about doing that? Great question. Um, for me personally, two things I've done. Number one, if I'm already producing reports for an attorney, then I would, and every attorney is different. So it's, it's a lot of it is, um, uh, based on preferences with what work product, product you're going to produce. So for me, one step I've taken is gaining the feedback from the attorney and really asking, was this report helpful? Um, defining the medical terms, was that helpful to you? Did you, you know, just to confirm, right. even though they tell me ahead of right. time, this is what I want. Right. I have found some instances where I uh, they think they know what they want. So mm -hmm. you know, you, that's what you give them. And then once they see it, they're like, oh, hey, can we change this next time? Or next time, I don't really need this. You can leave that out or whatever. So that's mm -hmm. one way okay. that it's an ongoing process. But if if the the basic report really isn't changing, but I I want to make it better to make it better, mm -hmm. I would reach out to probably someone more experienced than, than I am to take a look at my work. Um, okay. and like, yeah. Hey, you know, can you give me feedback on this? Yeah. 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 What do you yeah. think? Yeah. And yeah. I think it is important if you can to find that mentor or find yeah. that coach, um, that trustworthy person that can give right. you honest feedback, um, yeah. just as a colleague. Yeah. So, I love that. You know, and yeah, I have, not being afraid, not being afraid to reach out to someone and say, Hey, can you help me out here? Mm -hmm. Um, because feedback is important and mm -hmm. sometimes attorneys don't give you feedback. Yes. I know that <laughs> in particular, I've made it kind of a running joke with me because, yes. uh, yeah. the majority of my attorneys, uh, don't give feedback. They yeah. just take it and pay and keep going and then I'll get a case again. And it's like, well, okay, but did we, you know, like, was that everything you wanted or any yeah. modifications, anything? Yes. So when you want to make sure that you're producing your best, um, your best work, if your attorney gives you feedback, that's obviously the best, mm -hmm. but, but if they don't, then I love what you said, just reach out to someone that's that's been doing it longer, that's gone through all of those things that can give you feedback and not to be afraid to do that. I think that yeah. people might be afraid to ask someone to bother, to bother them. I know I, I, sometimes I do like, I don't want to bother you, but you know, but you know, if you find the right group of people, which is easy to find, mm -hmm. um, they're super helpful because we've all been in the same boat. So I love the fact that you share to reach out to someone and ask. Because mm -hmm. that gives people permission. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Absolutely. Okay. Um, well, I have one more thing. Like, what is the biggest tip when it comes to owning a business? This is going to be the last question. Okay. You're a business owner. And no, it's not the last question. I have one more question. But <laughs> okay. it's the business owner. As, as a new business owner, what is one tip that you would give someone? I think we kind of already talked about that as far as like, you know, taking the leap or, or not being afraid, but do you have any other uh, tips on being a business owner now that, you know, like you're a nurse and now I'm a business owner. What is your best advice? Ooh. Um, be brave. <laughs> I think, I think my best advice would probably be to, 
read books, listen to mm. podcasts, watch yeah. videos about business. Uh-huh. <laughs> Because yeah, yeah. we have the nursing thing down, yeah. we have the reading and the anal- analysis of the medical records. And after a while, you nail the report writing, right? right. And then yeah. eventually you come to a point where you're just kind of tweaking here and there according to attorney right. preferences, right? Or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Or if you're a subcontractor, you know, then you're doing the report based on the nurse that hired you, you know, according to their preferences and whatnot. But I think my number one advice um, as a business owner to just really dive in to the business world and mm-hmm. learn how that works and that how how that operates and the marketing part of, yeah. of business would Is be there my- anything. Is there anything in particular that you, any of your favorite pe- business people that you've, or books or podcasts on the business side that you have found really helpful to you that you could share? I think um, right now, one of the main ones for me is more of a like business mindset type. So a lot, I like to listen to a lot of like TED talks on business okay. or like Adam Grant. He's a or to, organizational psychologist mm. that it's about mindset because mm-hmm. there that's a lot that goes into it with oh, yeah. this um there's oh, another yeah. younger guy he's called the mindset mentor mm-hmm. and he's on instagram i've listened to his podcast um he's really good uh and then oh, that's great those are people those are names i have not heard so i love oh, it okay yeah i love that i love to learn I, I, I if for those of you listening not watching i have a bookcase full of books and a lot of them are business books and a lot of them are mindset books. And, um, but I love to hear new, that's why I wanted you to share. I love to hear new names that, that are sharing really helpful information. So, and I have some others that I'm needing to, you know, read or listen on audio, like atomic habits and like all these more well-known. Yeah. But so that would be one of my number one. And then the other tip is take it day by day, you know, Mm -hmm. just stay as organized as you can and just do your best every day because there is so much with the business. So just, um, one step at a time. (laughs) That's perfect. That actually, that actually answers really my last question anyway. So I appreciate you sharing all of your insight. I appreciate you patting yourself on the back, tooting your own horn, sharing with others, um, and really sharing your story. And I, I, and I feel lucky that I have gotten to know you better. So thank you for that. Can you share with everyone where you can be found on the social media, um, and where they can reach out to you just to say, Hey, thanks. And I listened to your podcast. I listened to the podcast. Thank you. Um, please reach out to Brenda. So share with everybody where, where they can find you. Great. Thank you so much for that. And I would love for any listeners of your listeners to reach out to me just to say hi. And if they want to learn more, I'm open to having that conversation. So my website is my business name is sustainable legal nurse consulting. And so type that in Google and it'll take you to my website. I can also be found on LinkedIn under my, uh, my full name, Brenda Johnson, and it'll have my business name there and also on Instagram and my, uh, business Instagram account is my business name, sustainable legal nurse consulting. So perfect. Perfect. And that will all be in the show notes. So people can click on those links, uh, to find you and say hello. So thank you once again, Brenda, I appreciate you being here And I can't wait for everyone to hear what you have to say. So thank you. Thank you so much, Anna. I've really enjoyed this and hopefully we'll get to do it again when I'm even further along. Yes, we'll do uh, part two later on. Where where are they now? (laughs) Absolutely. I love that. I love that. We will definitely. All right. Thank you. Thank you.